Greetings, true believers, and welcome to another powerful episode of History of the Marvel Universe. In our previous video, we recapped the Fantastic Four's encounters with the alien race known as the Kree, and how the Kree sent a scouting team to Earth, including one Captain Marvel, who human soldiers mistook for a new superhero. While acting as a spy on behalf of the Kree, Marvel took the identity of Walter Lawson, impersonating a human scientist at the American military base at Cape Kennedy. However, the base's security chief, former Air Force pilot Carol Danvers, became suspicious of Lawson and kept a close watch. Meanwhile, Marvel acted as the hero, Captain Marvel, battling foes such as the Super Skrull a member of the Kree's hated enemy race who had been imbued with the powers of the Fantastic Four. During this time, the alien hero began to grow more sympathetic towards the Earth and its people. When he was ordered by his superior officer, the villainous Jan Rog, to allow a deadly bacteria to be unleashed upon the people of New York, he was elated when Prince Namor, the Submariner, fought him and prevented such a catastrophe. And so as Carol Danvers grew distrustful of Walter Lawson, so too did Marvell's Cree overlords begin to suspect that he was a traitor who would ally with Earth. After Marvell repeatedly disobeyed orders and aided Danvers and the other humans, Ronan the Accuser commanded that he be put to death. While Jan Rog was more than happy to have Marvell killed, his execution was interrupted by the arrival of the Akon, another enemy of the Kree. Jan Rog ordered his men to fight back against the invaders, but in the crossfire, Marvell's beloved Una was shot and killed. Marvell blamed Jan Rog for Una's death, but did not have the means to defeat him at the time. And so the man who Carol Danvers thought an ally broke into the human military base with Una's corpse, stealing a rocket ship and escaping Earth to give his beloved a burial among the stars. Drifting alone in space, Marvell then came across the temple of a godlike entity known as Zo, who gifted him new powers, including increased strength and durability and the power of flight. With his new abilities, Marvell returned to Earth seeking revenge on Jan Rog, but arrived to find that after months of absence, both Walter Lawson and Captain Marvel were wanted by the military, with Carol Danvers determined to capture them both. It was soon revealed that Zoe was, in fact, an illusion conjured by Ronan the Accuser and Zarek the Imperial Minister as part of a plot to take over the Kree Empire. The powers they conferred to him with experimental Kree technology were real, however, and after being brought to the Kree homeworld of Hala and helping defend the Supreme Intelligence, a conglomeration of the greatest minds in Kree history, Marvell was given a new costume and allowed to return to Earth to exact revenge on Jan Rog. This is also when Marvell got trapped in the negative zone and became bound to the human Rick Jones, but that's a topic for another day. The important thing for now is that while Marvell was gone, Jan Rog captured Carol Danvers and unearth a powerful Kree machine known as the Psych Magnetron. Captain Marvel confronted his rival and defeated the Kree Mandroid that was conjured by the power of the ancient device. In the ensuing battle between Kree, however, Carol Danvers was shot and injured, and the machine was damaged. Enraged, Marvel beat Jan Rog nearly to death, but before he finished his rival, the Psych Magnetron began to overheat. Grabbing Carol, Captain Marvel escaped, leaving Jan Rog behind to perish in the explosion of the Psych Magnetron. What Marvel didn't realize at the time, however, was that the radiation released by the blast permeated both him and Carol, and Carol's human blood was infused with his own Kree DNA. It seems Carol was completely unaware of the change within her as well, although it likely allowed her miraculous recovery. However, while Carol Danvers survived the experience, her career did not, as she was judged by her peers for failing to capture Captain Marvel. Eventually, she left her position as Chief of Security and found new meaning in writing, later becoming an editor for a women's magazine published by J. Jonah Jameson of the Daily Bugle. 
This is how Carol became friends with Mary Jane Watson, who was dating Daily Bugle photographer Peter Parker at the time. Her career was far from the only major change Carol Danvers went through, however, as one day an intense pain came over her, and Carol blacked out. When she did, Carol Danvers transformed into the mighty Miss Marvel, complete with all the awesome power possessed by Captain Marvel. However, Miss Marvel had no memory of her life as a human, and at the same time, Carol didn't remember her exploits as Miss Marvel. This dual amnesia didn't last long, however, as Miss Marvel felt inexorably drawn to the sight of Marvel and Jan Rog's final battle. Here in the shattered remnants of the Psych Magnetron, Carol Danvers realized who she really was. Miss Marvel soon struck out into the world as one of Earth's mightiest heroes. She reunited with Marvel, teaming up in a battle against Ronan the Accuser crafted a new costume for herself, carving out her own identity, and even joined the Avengers, solidifying her place as one of Earth's greatest defenders. Miss Marvel was also the first hero to encounter the shape-shifting mutant known as Mystique. However, Carol had a falling out with the Avengers after she was mind-controlled and abducted by a man named Marcus, the son of the villain Immortus who brought Carol to his home dimension of Limbo. The Avengers unfortunately allowed this to happen, as Carol insisted on returning to Limbo with Marcus, and they didn't realize that she had been mentally manipulated. The whole situation was problematic in a lot of ways, but suffice it to say that Marcus died, unable to survive in Limbo after being reborn on Earth, and Carol escaped his dimension. She laid low in San Francisco for a time until she was attacked by Rogue, the protege of Mystique, who had the mutant power to drain the superhuman abilities and memories from anybody she made skin-on-skin -skin contact with. Normally the power drain would be temporary, but Rogue held on to Carol long enough to permanently drain Miss Marvel's powers, leaving her comatose. The evil mutant tossed Carol off the edge of the Golden Gate Bridge, but fortunately she was rescued by Spider-Woman, who just so happened to be gliding by at the time. Spider-Woman contacted Charles Xavier, the powerful psychic leader of the X-Men, to help restore Carol to consciousness. After tearfully berating the Avengers for allowing Marcus to take her, Carol decided to stay with the X-Men for a time. And what of Captain Marvel? Well, after he pledged himself to be Earth's protector, one of the enemies Marvel faced was the explosive supervillain Nitro. Nitro had stolen a canister of powerful nerve gas, and while Captain Marvel defeated the villain, the deadly compound began to leak out, threatening thousands of lives. Marvel held down the canister, closing it again and averting disaster, but unfortunately he learned later that the nerve gas had proved to be carcinogenic to his alien physiology. His powers allowed him to fight it for a time, but over the course of several years the cancer steadily grew inside of him. Earth's greatest mind searched for a cure, but to no success. The proud Kree warrior Marvel, knowing what was to come, got his affairs in order, and, in the end, Earth's mightiest heroes gathered to bid farewell to one of their own. This was the day that Captain Marvel died. Meanwhile, Carol Danvers continued to use her skills as a former Air Force pilot and security chief to aid the X-Men. During one adventure, Carol and the mutant team were abducted by the insectoid alien race known as the Brood. The Brood's experimentations on their quarry not only reactivated the dormant power inside the former Miss Marvel, but supercharged them, transforming her into Binary. As Binary, Carol had the ability to absorb, manipulate, and fire various kinds of energies. Following this, Binary spent some time in space with the Star Jammers, but eventually returned to Earth. After exhausting much of her newfound energy, Carol dropped from her Binary form. While not as powerful as she was during her time in space, Carol retained her new powers and later displayed the ability to temporarily transform into Binary upon absorbing enough energy. Ready to continue her heroic career, Carol rejoined the Avengers under the name Warbird, later taking back the mantle of Miss Marvel and leading a team of Avengers alongside Iron Man.
Carol later unmasked and revealed herself to the world with a new costume. Upon doing this, Captain America suggested that she also take a new name, or rather the mantle of her star-spawned predecessor. Carol was hesitant, having nothing but reverence for the Kree warrior Marvel and the legacy he'd left behind. After some thought, the former Miss Marvel decided to embrace the title and became the woman she was always meant to be. And that's how Carol Danvers became Captain Marvel. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, please leave a like, leave a comment, and share it on your favorite social media. Also, be sure to subscribe and tune in next week when we look at the second person to use the title of Captain Marvel, Monica Rambeau. As always, the issues referenced in this video are listed in the description below if you would like to read them for yourself, as well as links to my various social medias. Personally, I recommend the Death of Captain Marvel graphic novel. It's a good read. So until next time, true believers, Excelsior!